So I am Dr. Neil Kumar. I am going to start the first lecture on uh, this course that is introduction to mechanical vibration. So uh, this first week course the main topic is fundamental of vibrations and so in this first lecture we will uh, discuss some fundamentals and basic things about uh, the vibration. So first we will define what is vibration. Uh, so, vibration is a mechanical phenomenon where any motion that is back and forth motion or oscillations that occur about some equilibrium point that is called vibration. So, here uh, the motion should repeat itself, it can repeat after some fixed interval at of time or it may repeat after some varying interval of time. But the main condition is that it should perform the back and forth motion about some equilibrium point. So this theory of vibration, we will study the theory and this theory will deal with oscillatory motions of bodies and associated forces. And this vibration can have oscillations that is periodic or random. So if there is periodic oscillations means the motion is repeating itself after some equal interval of time. The examples could be the motion of a pendulum. motion of some swings when there is we neglect the resistance due to the air or the environment. The motion of some taut spring, taut string, motion of some spring when we pull and we release it, it will start vibrating. The motion of the piston in IC engines. So, these examples under the condition that there is no resistance to its motion, they can perform their motion in repetitive manner with equal interval of time. Then there is random oscillation. So, random oscillation when there is no any fixed interval of time for the repetition of the motion. Now, here example could be the oscillations of a vehicle that is moving on some irregular road profile or oscillation of an airplane wings in turbulent air flow. So, here we can see the examples that we have discussed. So, there, here is a pendulum and this is the equilibrium position and when we take this pendulum from disturbing from equilibrium position to some other position and we release it and we neglect the, uh, the damping effect of air. We assume that there is no air. So, this pendulum will oscillate with some fixed interval and this motion can be a periodic motion. Similarly, this function you can see that this function when going. So, and then this function again repeats itself after this fixed interval. So, this is repeating itself after the fixed interval t and therefore, this is periodic motion. Similarly, here this is the repetition. So, this cycle is being repeated again here and the fixed interval is t. Similarly, here 
we can see that there is a repetition of this cycle here and again this is repeating. Now if we see here in this case the repetition is not well known I mean after how much time the cycle is going up then passing through equilibrium coming down then going on. So here is no any fixed interval of time. So here this and this type of vibration behavior vibration signal we call it random. So now after defining the vibration we must understand that what can be the cause of a vibration in a mechanical system. So we know that every mechanical system has mass and elasticity or stiffness. So every mechanical system is prone to vibration that has mass and stiffness. So what happens when a mechanical system is disturbed from its equilibrium position? It may start vibrating So a mechanical system can be disturbed from its equilibrium position. So we need some force to disturb this. And this force can be external force or some force that is generated from within the system. And the force generated from within the system usually are the unbalanced forces in the system. For example, if a car is running on a typical road profile, it can vibrate due to two main reasons. The first one is the excitations that is coming from the external factors that is the irregular road profile. So if the road profile is irregular, so the forces are coming from the road profile that is the external force. Second, there is engine in the car and there could be some unbalanced forces generated in the engine and these forces can create vibrations in engine components and these vibrations can also transmit to other components of the car because all the components are mechanically connected and so therefore the causes of vibration are both external as well as internal forces. Similarly the unbalanced forces can be generated due to if there is some clearance between the two force transmitting components or members. Similarly, there are several forces that is in the that are in the nature like wind load, earthquake, water waves, etc. And these forces are random in nature and when they are applied to some structure or some mechanical component like maybe some buildings, some ships. these structures or systems can go into vibrations. So now here we can see the examples. So here are some mechanical system these pumps, belts, pul pulley belt system, the motors, the fans. So these Components that have the rotating members, they may have unbalanced forces due to their center of mass not lying on the axis of rotation. Similarly, these belts, they have some slip, they have some belts that is worn out and there is some unbalance of the forces. 
So this anyhow if there is some unbalanced forces generated in the system, they will cause the vibration of that system. Here if there is more clearance than needed, so the component will have again the unbalanced forces. Here the bolts, if the bolts are loose, they will not transfer properly the forces to the connecting system and so again there will be some unbalance of the forces. So whenever there is excessive bearing clearance, loose mounting bolts, mismatched parts or there is corrosion and cracked structures. So they all are going to reduce the uh, or affect the elasticity of the system. The, the transmission of force from one component to other and that is prone to vibration because that is going to create some unbalanced force in the system. Now after understanding that there are mainly two reasons for the vibration that are caused that is external and internal regions, internal forces. Now what is the effect of vibration? So effect of vibration is suppose you are going in some automobiles or train then if there is generation of vibration that may cause discomfort to the passengers. So th this is one level that is just causing discomfort, but there could be higher levels of this that like in turbines, the vibration can cause mechanical failures of blades or some other component. The structures that are designed to support the rotary component like motors, pumps, turbines, etc. They are also subjected to vibration because if the vibration is being generated in some mechanical system and these systems are installed on some foundation. So the vibration will pass to the foundation and then the foundation can, the person who are working on the foundation or on the floor, they can feel the vibration, they can feel discomfort, they can feel annoyance due to this vibration. There could be, because vibration causes the mechanic, mechanical components to perform the repetitive motion and therefore those components can uh, be subjected to some fatigue stresses. It could be high cycle fatigue stresses and so the part can fail due to material fatigue due to the vibration. However, usually the vibration cause is more rapid wear of machine parts such as bearings and gears and also creates excessive noise that is another source of annoyance. And if there is some vibration, the fasteners that is some bolt joints, bolts and nuts, they can become loose. And in manufacturing processes or metal cutting processes, the, if there is vibration, then it can cause, cause shatter and that will lead to poor surface finish of the component or the product. So here we can see some other extreme uh, vibration effects like here is the failure of a bridge due to wind excitation. So here we can see that uh, due to the wind forces that is the external forces 
uh, this breeze was excited such that it completely collapsed. And this is another effect when failure of turbine blades due to the vibration fatigue. So, here we can see that the vibration effect of vibration can vary from causing minimum discomfort to the complete collapse of a mechanical system. And therefore, we need to study the vibration. So, here why to study the vibration? Although the although vibration has some uh, positive uh, effects that are used in industries and that we will discuss later or in the next slide, but vibration has mainly or generally the negative effects and we try to avoid or try to prevent the vibrations in a mechanical system. So, vibration is undesirable in a mechanical system. Why? Because when the natural frequency of the mechanical system coincides with or near it is near to or closer to the external force of that is applied on the system, then the vibration of the mechanical system is excessive or having very large amplitude and that phenomenon is called the resonance. And when a system is in resonance condition, theoretically it has infinite amplitude of vibration or very large amplitude of vibrations and the system may collapse. So, therefore, this uh, vibration is undesirable in a mechanical system and why should we study the vibration? So, that we can remove the causes of vibration at design stage. That is the regions that is going to create or factors that are going to affect the vibration of that system. We could design the system so that it can be away from the vibration. For example, if we want to avoid the resonance condition, we know that these are the particular frequency of force that is coming to the system, then we can design the mechanical system such a way that its natural frequency is quite away from the external force frequency, so that we could avoid the resonance condition. This is one, uh, one um, way to avoid the resonance, but there are, there could be many other design possibilities that can help us to design our system from vibration point of view. We can design adequate suspension system of a car or rail vehicle, so that the vibrations that are coming to the coaches, they are not very high level, so that the passengers can feel the discomfort. Now, if uh, this is uh, for a system that we are going to uh, design, so we are in the design stage, but if the system is already existing and it is facing some problem due to vibration, then, then also we need to study so that we can modify or we can supplement that system so that its vibration problem is solved. We can design proper vibration mitigation st strategies, so that we can supplement some devices like dampers to that system. We can add some dampers, so that 
the system system is uh, have less vibration it feels less vibration amplitude so design of the dampers are proper vibration mitigation strategy that is external to the system that is another aspect that we should study for existing systems so now we understand that why we should study the vibration we can come to the positive effect of vibration that is used in industries or industrial applications for example there are several applications in industry like vibratory conveyors hoppers sieves compactors washing machines electric to brushes dentists drills clocks electric messaging units etc so there are numerous industries where you will find the application of vibration in constructive manner vibration is used to improve the machining efficiency to improve the efficiency of casting process forging process welding process etc so vibration has many uh, if, uh, positive effects but in this course we will most of the time we will be discussing about how to design our mechanical system to avoid the detrimental effect of the vibration now we understand uh, what is vibration what are the causes of vibration uh, why should we study the vibration now let's go to understand more uh, the basics like we discussed that vibration could have the fixed interval of time it could have uh, irregular interval of time so if there is fixed interval of time we call it periodic motion so here periodic motion is a motion which repeats itself after equal interval of time and that equal interval of time for to complete one cycle is called time period and number of cycles per unit time is called the frequency so here these examples we have already discussed and we have this is period so one cycle is completed so that is period and this could be from any from starting from anywhere to anywhere so from here to here this could be also period now what is simple harmonic motion so simple harmonic motion is a, a periodic motion it is a special case of periodic motion so it is a periodic motion of a particle or of a point where acceleration is always directed towards the equilibrium position or mean position and acceleration is proportional to its uh, distance from the mean position so this is the acceleration is always directed towards the mean position and is proportional to its uh, distance from the mean position so how can we realize this simple harmonic motion we can see there is a particle moving on this circle so this particle is moving on this circle with some omega and omega is the constant angular velocity if we put we see the normal of this so 
we can see the normal. So, the normal on the diameter will perform the simple harmonic motion. This we can see here in this figure very clearly. So, here is this circle having radius a and this particular p is particle p is moving. So, it is t equal to 0 here this point and it is moving with constant angular velocity omega. So, for time t it is theta is omega into t and when we put the perpendicular. So, this is so here this is theta theta equal to omega t and here we put the perpendicular. So, this perpendicular let us say this is p this is m this is n. So, this is o. So, here o m equal to p n that is equal to a o p sin theta or that is a sin theta and similarly o n equal to o p cos theta. So, a cos theta. So, now here theta is omega t. So, a sin omega t and this is a cos omega t. So, we see that when uh, now come to this slide, the motion of the projectile of a particle moving around a circle with uniform angular velocity on a diameter. So, this is the another definition of simple harmonic motion that when a particle is moving on a circle and we, we put the perpendicular on any diameter of that circle that projection on the diameter will move perform the simple harmonic motion and this we can see from this expression that this a sin omega t. So, a sin omega t a cos omega t. So, both are the simple harmonic motions and if we perform the y dot that is for this, this is a cos omega t into omega and when we perform y double dot that is d square y by dt square. So, we will get minus because cos will minus omega square a sin omega t. So, that is minus omega square y and this is y double dot. So, now here y double dot equal to minus omega square y and if we see the first de definition here that y double dot equal to minus omega square y. Now, you match this definition acceleration is always directed towards the mean position and is proportional to its distance from the mean position. So, there y was the distance from O that is O is the mean position and so there is the negative sign that is always towards mean position and this is proportional to the distance that is y. So, this definition is already satisfied here and then the time period is 2 pi by omega and frequency is 1 by time period that is omega by 2 pi. Now, uh, we discuss some more basics like the degree of freedom. So, a system has n degree of freedom if it needs n independent coordinates to specify completely the configuration of the system at any instant of time. So, for example, here pendulum need uh, only one coordinate that is theta because this theta from theta we can uh, we can tell uh, its coordinates at any instant of time. Similarly, here we have one degree of freedom because this is moving in just one direction here theta and but these here we need two because there are two masses and these two masses each mass need one degree of freedom. So, this is a two degree of freedom system. Now, elements of a uh, vibrating system. So, uh, mechanical system has 
as I discussed that uh, every mechanical system has certain mass and elasticity or stiffness. So, what is the role of the stiffness or elasticity? That is a spring element and its role is to uh, conserve the or store the potential energy. However, the role of the mass is to store the kinetic energy. There is one more component in a mechanical system that is called damper and its role is to dissipate the energy that is stored. So, these are the M, K and C mass, stiffness and damper element that, that in the mechanical system these are the basic elements of a system and they have their role. And here uh, the vibration of system involves the transfer of its potential energy to kinetic energy because if we have a pendulum and we pull it at certain height and then release then we are when we are holding it at certain height we are giving the potential energy and now this potential energy is going to convert into kinetic energy and vice versa. And if there is damping due to air resistance, then the oscillation amplitude of the pendulum will decrease slowly and it will come to rest. But if there, uh, so that is the damping element that is going to dissipate the energy. If there is no any air res uh, resistance, there is inert environment, there is no any gas or particle. So, there is no damping. So, the once we give the energy, potential energy, the system will vibrate forever. So, uh, these are the three elements and the damping is the resistance to the motion of the vibrating body and energy is dissipated in the system due to damping. Now, here classification of vibration, we can classify the vibration in several ways. So, there are free vibration and forced vibration. So, free vibration of a system is vibration due to its own elastic properties. There is no external exciting force acts in this case during the motion or during the vibration, but there should be some initial disturbance of the mechanical system from its equilibri equilibrium position. So, once we disturb this system, we take this system little away from its equilibrium position, it will start vibrating and that is the frequency of uh, the, that, that phenomenon is the free vibration and frequency of that vibration is the natural frequency because free vibration occurs by the system due to its own elastic properties and natural frequency is the frequency of the system. So, therefore, the natural frequency is defined as the frequency of the free vibration or vice versa we can say that free vibra in free vibration the system vibrates with its own natural frequency. So, to cause the free vibration you just disturb the system little bit from its equilibrium position that is all we do not need to keep applied all the forces during the vibration or when the vibration is started. Now, contrary to the free vibration, there is forced vibration when the system executes vibration under an external force. It could be a repeating type of force, a harmonic force and when the system vibrates with uh, the external excitation force or under forced vibration, usually it vibrates with the frequency of the force vibration or excitation force. Now, natural frequency we already defined that it is the frequency of free vibration. Resonance when the frequency of the external force coincides with the natural frequency of the system. This is the called resonance and in this condition the amplitude of vibration becomes very excessive 
and phase difference is the angle between two rotating vectors representing simple harmonic motion. So, it could be any two vectors, it could be a sin omega t and a sin omega t plus phi. So, there is the phase difference of phi between the two vectors. Then we can, we have undamped and damped vibration. So, undamped vibration, if there is no energy lost or dissipated during motion, so it means there is no damper in the system. There is only spring and mass system. So, this is undamped vibration. And if the energy is lost in the motion, this is called the damped vibration. So, there is the damper in the system or there is some way to dissipate the energy in the system. It could be friction, it could be some resistance, air resistance, etcetera. In many physical systems, the amount of damping is very small and so we can neglect. However, in resonance condition, we cannot neglect because that little damping can uh, keep the oscillations of the system within some finite range. Otherwise, at zero damping, the theoretically the system can lead towards the infinite vibration amplitude. Then, Another classification could be the linear and nonlinear vibration. So, we call linear vibration when the each element like spring, mass and damper behave linearly. They are in the linear range. So, the force and uh, displacement relationship for a spring is linear. So, f equal to k x. If there is damper, so it is f equal to c into v. So, they are in the linear range. So, th we call this vibration linear vibration. If they we have nonlinear way, like if the f equal to k x cube, so that is there is some cubic type of nonlinearity in the system. And therefore, another definition is that the differential equations that govern the behavior of linear and nonlinear vibratory systems are linear and nonlinear respectively. So, because the, a system we will uh, we will form the differential equation, we will represent a system with the differential equation. So, the differential equations becomes nonlinear when there is nonlinear uh, elements in the system. For the linear system, we can apply the principle of superposition, but however, for nonlinear systems, we cannot hold the principle of superposition. So, here uh, we discussed the basics of the vibration and we will continue uh, to go to higher level in the next lectures. So, I thank you for attending this lecture and see you in the next lecture.